So we're doing a Q&A today, which is very exciting. I got really cool questions. I would say, let's get into it. They're long questions, they're hard questions, they're fun questions. Let's go. The question I got the most is a very sweet question. And that is, how are you? Like, how are you really? Like, how are you really doing? And I'm doing very good. I think I've had a, a rough couple of months with the miscarriage that I had. I think it's been a month and a half now. And also the moving, which has been quite stressful. So I really did notice some anxiety coming up in my body. Just noticing that I was actually too busy. and needed to take more time to work on everything that happened. And that's what I did. Actually, I took a week off of social media and just tried to relax a little bit and that really worked but you know it wasn't magically gone in a week you know that's the great thing about these things when bad things happen you are actually forced to really work on yourself because you feel shitty and that gets you to a whole new place and that is what is happening now the more and more i dive into certain books and listen to certain people and podcasts and things i really believe in the more I, I start to live it and feel it in my day-to-day -day life and I get to a point where I am feeling more calm, more than I've ever felt. Even in my most stressful times, even in my most, most anxiety panic attacks, I can go back to a sense of like calmness, which I didn't have before these past couple of months. So I'm actually very grateful and I feel like I really made steps. Yeah. So yeah, that's how I'm doing. Next question, what is the first thing that you do in the morning? Great question. First thing I do in the morning is I pee and I go on my phone. I mean, I really tried the whole no phones in the bedroom thing, but it doesn't work for me yet because my phone is the thing that wakes me up in the morning. I always wake up around 7.30, but then I need some time to really wake up and I use my phone for that. Okay, now my recent favorite books. I love this question. All right, so I am reading this book called... Shit. Now I forgot the name. Okay, found it. So, the book that I've been reading a little bit of every day is this one. It's called The Great Thinkers. It's by The School of Life. Uh, another one here, I, I got The Seed of the Soul, which I think is really beautiful. It's very spiritual, but I love that side of me as well. Tips for buying your first house. Totally different question, but I really have some tips to give you. So, we bought our house, and I think something that really is a good tip that I know a lot of my friends did as well and it actually always kind of worked and you know that this is a tip that I got from one of you guys once and I don't know who it was but thank you um, the tip is that if you buy a house and you put in an offer to send in a personal letter with that offer just a little story about who you are what you're doing and put a picture in there as well and just so you make it personal and the people that that are selling the house know who they're selling their house to and know who they can choose which I don't know it's kind of nice and personal and it really works but I feel like a lot of people do that now so maybe the owners of the house are not really do not really want to know anything about you could also be but you know you can try that's a tip how to deal with stress or panic moments hmm okay so this is gonna be the most cliche thing I'll ever say and that is to just take a deep breath oh you you really I'm sorry this is bad advice I mean you've probably heard this a million times but that's what really did it for me take a deep breath and realize you have to stop trying to control things you cannot control because the only thing you'll be left with is anxiety nothing else and that really why aren't you vegan? Well, I have tried a vegan diet and it made me feel really bad. It made me sick actually. I guess I didn't do it well at all. I think I didn't eat, I didn't get a lot of vitamins that I should have gotten and I just, yeah, I didn't really do it well. Um, I think the biggest reason for me is that I don't love vegetables. Like, yay, I'm sorry. I, I wish I did. I wish I was like, oh, broccoli, mm, excited. And I know you're thinking right now, oh, but you haven't tried my way of broccoli. You haven't tried this kind of broccoli. Believe me, I've tried them all. I'm just not the biggest vegetable fan. I wish I was. You know, I love bell pepper and cucumber, but that's basically water. I'm just, the taste of vegetables, I can do it because I know it's healthy for me, but I don't enjoy it that much. So for me, a vegan diet would be very complicated to make really, nice things for myself okay this is a question i constantly feel at implementing new routines how do you manage to do that 
I feel you. I have been there, done that, and I still find it very hard to implement new routines that I really like and enjoy. But I think the most important thing is to start small. Don't try to do everything at once, even though you feel like you have the motivation now to do everything. That motivation will go away and that won't help you in the end. So please try and start small. Start with like a little thing. Start with like maybe you want to take a b12 supplement and you fail to do it regularly so try start with that and i've mentioned this a lot on my instagram stories lately is that you can connect a new habit with an old one and that works pretty damn well because the old one is already there and just place the thing that you want to do next to the old habit for example if you take a glass of water every morning like that's just something that you do without even thinking about it try to place something that you want to do for example the vitamins try to place them next to your uh, next in your kitchen next to the kraan how say that kraan water um kraan crane crane no Kitchen faucet? Try put it next to your kitchen faucet. <laughs> Just look at your life, see if you can find these habits that you've been doing the same for years and try to connect a new habit to that. Okay. How would you deal with someone not texting you back after hanging out and getting along great? Okay, so this is something that I have personally experienced a lot and with a lot of these questions I can only basically share my own advice because I don't know much about your situation. In the past I have experienced it actually a lot of times because I was looking for love. I wanted it so badly. I really, I wanted the assurance that I was likable and lovable. I wanted the Hollywood movie. I wanted it and I, I tried it and I fought for it and I went on a lot of dates and met a lot of guys. Actually a lot of the times they stopped texting me back or they stopped, they stopped responding and that really made me very sad and I didn't understand it and it, and I always found excuses for them why they didn't text me back like I was always like oh yeah but you know maybe they're just busy or maybe they they forgot about it maybe and then I guess I just never wanted to realize that maybe they weren't looking for a relationship maybe they didn't like me the way I liked them maybe they just honestly weren't interested in the same things that I was interested in or maybe were in a different place and time in their life so if I look back on that I would say to myself and probably also to you who asked this question is don't take it personal it is that's the thing that I learned being in a relationship for a long time is that people are very different and most of the time you feel like people are all the same but they're not, they're so different. So for someone not to text you back, it can mean so many things to them. It has nothing to do with you and everything with the other person. And if it's not a match, then it's not a match. And you'll find your person one day. Even though you felt maybe like it was great, maybe it was great, maybe honestly, maybe he's just on holiday and his phone was lost. That's, that's the things that I was always telling myself, but it could be, could be, you don't know. But just don't take it that personal because I'm pretty sure you're great and some things are just not a match and some boys or girls are just not looking for a relationship sometimes there's miscommunication there could be a lot of things but don't eat yourself up over it I, I don't know if that's a Dutch expression or if that's an English expression as well but that's what we say don't eat yourself up over it zeggen we dat überhaupt? of is it niks? ik weet niet okay on to the next one married life or girlfriend life? I would say married life because I don't know I just I, I love being married but the bad thing about being married especially when most of your friends or actually all your friends are not married is that you become the grown-up couple like oh you're so grown up you're already married like that that's sometimes that feels a bit like no doesn't I don't relate with people saying that to me because I don't feel that way I just feel like we had a great party and that was our marriage and now we're married and that doesn't feel grown up at all, that just feels like you're able to throw a great party and it was fun and then, you know, you're married. I don't know. I don't know, I just don't agree with that. It's annoying, I don't like it. Please don't say that to me. Or is this like more my own insecurity that I'm getting older and I just don't want to be reminded of it? Could be. So, um, okay, girlfriend life, married life. I would say married life because it just feels awesome. Uh, girlfriend life because then you feel more young but then again it's not a bad thing to grow old so i'm all just brainwashed by society thinking that growing old is a bad thing so in the end i don't know how to find 
what you love in life that's a deep one wait one second how to find what you love in life it could be a place it could be um, it could be an object it could be so many things maybe it's when you're talking to a friend and you're helping that friend because that friend has a problem and you could give great advice and maybe there's one particular subject with advice that really grabs your heart for example food or working out or even more like on the science side could be anything like what what triggers you when you talk when you talk to people you know when you're at a table and you hear all these conversations of people it's like what are the conversations that you really want to take part in right when you hear different conversations there's always one that attracts you more than the other different subjects like which is the one that, you, that attracts you like that's that's the things that you love and i think when you just observe yourself see whatever makes you tick i think then you can totally find it okay an unpopular opinion of yours ah let's get this question i really don't know an answer were you always this positive and full of energy i love that that you see me that way thank you that's a big compliment um all right so we're gonna call my dad and see what he says because i honestly don't know a lot about how i was like as a child Oké, okay, ik heb een vraag. Ik ben een yeah. YouTube video aan het opnemen. Yeah. En mensen hebben vragen gesteld waar ik antwoord op moet geven. Yeah. En één vraag is, was je altijd zo positief en vol met energie vroeger als kind? Dus het zou leuk zijn als je daar antwoord op kan geven in het Engels. Een spraakantwoord? Ja, gewoon zeg nu, gewoon zeggen. Ik neem het nu op. Nee, ik ga, nee, ik ga eerst even met jou overleggen wat ik ga zeggen. Oh, oké. Okay. <laughs> Ja, dat lekker ben jij. Nou, even, kijk even, als ik het even, ik wil even goed nadenken, Jo, wat valt mij. Uh, als ik dan aan jou terug denk, ik vind dat jij weinig, je hebt ook weinig echte tegenvallers gehad. En dat komt ook omdat je een tegenvaller niet ervaart als een tegenvaller. Ah. Ja, als jij iets, bijvoorbeeld, als jij cliënten kwijt was je in de trein, dacht je, nou, kut, maar ja, goed, dat heb ik gemaakt. Ja, zo. Ja. Weet je wel? Dus. Hè, dat voorbeeld dat als je dan de trein terugkwam met je kleren pleiten waar had je laten liggen, je was je slaap gevallen. Ja, dus ja. Ik, ik denk wel dat je de kans hebt om dingen van een positieve kant te bekijken. En je bent vol energie, je kunt vol energie ben je of je kunt het tweede blazen. Ja. Ja. En daartussen zit weinig. Ja, agree. Agreed. Ja. En nu opnieuw, maar dan alles in het Engels. Zo, so, nu. <laughs> I think yes, you are positive. Wat een MAC. Uh, that uh, when something bad happens, what always happens in your life when you were a child and you're growing up, you didn't uh, experience it like it was negative. It was not such an issue for you if it was negative. So, you experienced it. Oh, the bell gaat. So irritant. Okay, maar ik heb, ik heb het antwoord, Bob. Alright. That was very hectic, but I loved it. Okay. So, let me show you my, oh fuck, let me show you my outfit. So, I am wearing my very own Naked collection and I wanted to give a shout out. I'm putting the link in my bio so you can check it out. The sweater that I'm wearing is from my collection and the pants that I'm wearing are from my collection. They are jeans and I have them in three colors. I have them in black, just in a normal jeans color and in beige. And they are honestly perfect. So, just gonna show you, because I'm proud. Sweater, pants. Ooh, that's bad lightning. That's bad. I'm going downstairs to show you. We have the sweater. I love the sweater. And we have the jeans. They are um, wide, they're wide jeans. Okay, so link will be in the bio. Thanks everyone for watching this Q&A. I hope I gave you some good tips. I hope I answered most of your questions. Um, as you can see, I'm in a very spiritual journey myself. So I love talking about these things and, whoa, I love talking about these things and yeah, learning more together. So have a good day.